650 is the time this Thursday. Your top headlines in our Sunrise Smart Start. That breaking story, one person is dead after a fiery crash this morning in Webster. It's certainly a dramatic scene, one that continues to unfold at Ridge Road and Holt Road, which is where we find Iran Spitzer live with the latest update from first responders. Iran. Yeah, guys, we did get that confirmation of one man dead. The scene here has completely cleared, but that was a violent, fiery crash. Right here to my right, you can see the tire that came off. That's around 50 yards away from where the car is. Now, we did get a little timeline of events. That call came in at around 5 a.m. for that fiery crash. When first responders arrived, they found a red car with the engine engulfed in flames and one man inside. They pulled that man out of the car as they were performing forming CPR, those flames kept moving up the car. The driver was transferred to the hospital but died shortly after. The Department of Transportation is currently assessing that damage. The name of the man who died will be released after the family is notified. Now this area is still very, very much closed off to traffic. It's unclear yet when this area will be open. We're told it may even take all day, if not more than that. For now, guys, reporting from Webster, Iran Spitzer, News 8. All right. Thank you for that update. Iran will certainly keep you up to date on that as the scene progresses. In further breaking news, another chaotic scene on Jefferson Avenue. Several people there hit by a car. This happened just around 11 last night. Jefferson near Champlain Street. Police say one car was spinning its tires at the intersection, which caused a great deal of smoke and poor visibility. That is when another car passing through the intersection ran into three people who were standing in the middle of the street. That driver immediately stopped but was pulled out of the vehicle by a crowd of people as they confronted him and in fear of serious injuries police say the driver ran from the scene picked up by someone and taken to the hospital the three pedestrians also hospitalized though everyone is reportedly expected to recover officers on the scene add they heard shots fired in the area but say no one was hit no charges are expected related to this accident as we continue to follow these breaking stories we'll share that with you online at rochesterfirst.com and Iran will join us from Webster as we watch the cleanup after that fatal accident coming up at 725. What else we're following happening today? The parents of this baby boy killed in Rochester in a dog attack are set to appear in court this morning for their arraignment. And their arrests came just yesterday afternoon. 19-year-old Anastasia Weaver and 19-year-old Suleiman Hawkins Sr. set to be arraigned at 930 this morning for second-degree manslaughter charges. Police say their three-month-old baby was mauled to death earlier this month on August 3rd when police say Weaver and Hawkins Sr. left their son Suleiman Hawkins Jr. alone with two dogs in an attic of their home on Bidwell Terrace. Police say the parents had left the baby sleeping on the floor while they went downstairs to smoke marijuana and when they came back they found the baby unresponsive, severely injured after at least one of those two dogs attacked the child. The baby died hours later in the hospital. The medical examiner ruled the child's death as a homicide and both of the dogs have since been euthanized after the attack. We'll keep you updated on their court case. Also at the Hall of Justice, the sentencing today for a woman convicted in the kidnapping of a Rochester mother and her son that set off an Amber Alert. You may recall this happened last year in March. 21-year-old Nyjah Rodney was arrested along with an 18-year-old man and a 16-year-old girl for helping 25-year-old Daniel Ponder take a mom and her young boy from a house on Fulton Avenue. Both were found safe hours later. Ponder was arrested after a chase in the city. Rodney will be in court for the sentencing. That's this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Also happening today, a South Wedge convenience store and deli, the Highland Market, will close its doors. The store on South Ave is one of the few places you can get grocery stores, groceries in this neighborhood. Stores are few. The business was also designated as a healthy grocer by the city, but the market's current ownership took over last year, and Stephanie DeBleek and her husband say that though they had a combined 50 years of food service between them, after months of trying to make us work, they say the math just couldn't add up. They can't uh, keep things going, though they are sad to leave their customers. There will be a customer appreciation closeout sale with 25% of all grocery purchases off. It is back to step one in the drawing board for the developers hoping at some point to get the green light to build a new Costco in Pinfield. In a letter addressed to the town, the engineers for Pinfield Partners LLC say they are withdrawing the current blueprints. They write at this point, the team needs to review, incorporate, and address input that was gathered to date and come up with a new sketch plan. Earlier this month, there was standing room only at a meeting, a crowd of neighbors raising concerns about the proposal, talking about costs, safety, traffic. The developers say they will submit a new application, but they did not give us a time frame on when that might be in.
News 8, your local election headquarters and vice president nominee Tim Walls, the keynote speaker at the Democratic National Convention last night. On stage, he used this moment to introduce himself again to the whole country. The Minnesota governor, who's seen as popular, highlighted the values he learned as growing up while taking the former formal nomination for VP. Everybody belongs and everybody has a responsibility to contribute. He also laid out what current VP Kamala Harris would do for Americans if she wins the White House. Pillars of the Democratic Party, former President Bill Clinton and former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi also echoed the call for Americans to throw their support behind Harris. If you can get them elected and let them bring in this breath of fresh air, you will be proud of it for the rest of your life. I know that Vice President Harris is ready to take us to new heights. Tonight's the final night at the DNC. VP Harris will be there taking the stage to accept the party's nomination for president. Sunrise traffic before we get to a final check of your forecast with James at 655. Keep in mind Ridge and Holt Road. So just south of the Coles, Dick's Sporting Goods, Wegmans Plaza's over there. That'll be closed after that fiery crash this morning. The west side, everything's okay with traffic starting to pick up. More sunrise traffic again in half an hour. All right, James, the view from the bay in Sodus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gorgeous there. A lot of people, I think, uh, trying to spend some time along the waters this weekend. Should be a really nice stretch. Temperatures right now, you feel a little chill out there. Soda's at 55. Dansville 55 as well. Rochester 53. We get into the mid-70s this afternoon. So we're still below average, which is 80 degrees. We'll probably get there Friday, tomorrow. And then looks great this weekend, whatever your plans are. Maybe you're going to the State Fair. Huh? Mm. Uh, yeah. Or maybe you're going to see Shaq in <laughs> Buffalo. Oh. <laughs> DJ? DJ. DJ. Shaq is Stop. a DJ. He's going to be in Buffalo this I weekend. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're learning things every day. Way Bringing up on you the phone. There you go. <laughs> that does it for us. We'll see you back here in 30. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, X, and on our app for news and weather.